Hello and welcome to your tutorial on how to create a burned wood effect using GIMP. I'm going to show you how to do this as well as how to use the bump map effect to create this image. So begin by clicking File, New. You want an image that's 2000 in width and 1000 in height. Click OK. I'm going to click File, Open as Layers and I've pre-selected an image of wood grain that I just pulled from Google. And you're not really going to need this background layer here, so go ahead and click on that background layer and click the trash can here to get rid of it. So now I'm going to add the text by clicking the text tool. The font is sans bold and I've made the pixel size 500. So click on the layer Type in your text, and then to center it, click the Move tool, and then click on the text and drag it into position. I don't want to drag it right over there because when I displace the text later, it could cause some problems. So I'm going to stay away from that really dark line. Next up, we're going to be displacing the text, and for displacement, it's very important that the layers be the same size. So the wood grain layer, if you right click on it, you can say layer to image size, but it's already there. Uh, GIMP, the GIMP layer, you want to right click on it and also say layer to image size. So now that they're the same size, we're ready to displace the text by going to filters, map, and displace. And I want to displace it 10 for the X and 10 for the Y. And make sure that you're displacing it over the wood grain layer rather than over the text itself. So if you click OK, you can see that the text is taken on some of the characteristics of the wood grain behind it. Now I'm going to switch the mode from normal to grain merge so that you can see through to an extent the text to the grain behind it. Now I need a new layer, so I'm going to click Create New Layer and make sure that the layer fill type is transparent. I want this layer to be below the original GIMP text, so I'm going to select the layer and then click the down arrow to put it below. Now right click on the original text layer and say Alpha to Selection. Now click on the layer beneath it, and we're going to grow that selection by clicking Select, Grow, and we're going to grow it by 30 pixels. So I want this background selection to be a slightly lighter color than my original text, but not too light, because we're going to grain merge it as well, and that lightens the color of the text anyway. So I'm just picking a dark brown color, clicking OK, I'm going to click my Fill tool, and the Fill tool should be on Fill Whole Selection with the foreground color. So I'm going to click on it to fill the whole selection, and you can immediately see that my original text is way too dark now. So to get rid of that, you have to right click on the original layer, go back to the Alpha to Selection again, click on the layer beneath it, and then press delete to get rid of that layer so you can once again see the original GIMP text. Now I'm going to go select and none and change the second layer from normal to grain merge. So now we kind of need to scatter this background color to give it more of a branded effect. So to do that, right click on the layer Alpha to Selection, and then we need to invert that selection by going to Select and Invert. Click on Filters, Distorts, and Wind. I'm using a wind threshold of 10 and a strength of 70. You can't see anything in this preview right now, but if I scroll over to it, you'll be able to see it. Right now the direction is from the right. Go ahead and click OK. So we're going to 
switch the wind direction now by clicking filters, reshow wind, and switch the direction to the left. Get rid of the selection by clicking select and none. So the lines on this are really still too strong to create a very good branded effect, so I want to blur them. To do that, click filters, blur, and Gaussian blur. I'm going to blur it by 60 on the horizontal and 60 on the vertical. Click OK. And it's a pretty good blurred effect. I still want it to be a little bit lighter, so I'm going to reduce the opacity on this to 64. Now, you can leave the top layer as it is. I personally think it's still a little light. So to darken up that top layer, click on it, and then click the Create a Duplicate Layer button. And you can see now it's too dark, but you can lighten the opacity of that top layer. And I'm actually going to lighten it all the way down to 35. So as you can see, this is pretty close to our original image. And now to create that final image, if you want to bump map it, then you click Image, Flatten Image, and then Filters, Light and Shadow, and Lighting Effects, because we're adding a lighting effect in addition to the bump map. So you can move your light wherever you'd like to. I think it looks best up here in the top left corner for this particular effect. The rest of the settings you can just leave as they are. You'll need to click Enable Bump Mapping and then turn down the maximum height. It originally starts out, I think, at 0.1. I've turned it all the way down to 0.01. And just click OK. And that creates the bump mapping effect. I moved the light a little bit so it's just slightly different from the original one. And you'll notice as you start using this effect that where you put the light makes a big difference. So play around with it, see what works for you. And uh, thank you for watching. And if you this was helpful to you.